out there. Welcome to another airing of 62 Who Knew, uh, one of the great shows on the Internet just for people 60 plus with all kinds of ways to address how to improve and make the most out of the, the, your, your years, your retirement years. Uh, I'm Mark Goldberg. I'm your special guest host for this evening. Um, our the incomparable Mike Banner uh, had a little bit of a conflict, but he does send his regards to all of your his regular fans out there, and uh, he looks to be back with you next week. Uh, I'm excited to sit in for him and bring to you a very very special guest um, on a topic I don't think we've actually discussed yet on 62 Who Knew. Um, when I was told I was going to have the opportunity to host the show, I immediately thought of this gentleman. His name is Chris Arrestus. He's uh, the president of Life Care Exchange. And we're going to be discussing life settlements in today's markets. Um, Chris is one of his many titles is the retirement genius. And he's, as I said, president of Life Care Exchange. It's a nationally recognized health, he's, he's a nationally recognized healthcare expert and a senior advocate. He's been in this space for more than 25 years. Um, he started out in insurance and long-term care, and he's credited with pioneering the long-term care life settlement over a decade ago. He, he was a political insider. He was uh, in Washington, D.C. as a lobbyist. He worked both with the White House and for the Senate Majority Leader on Capitol Hill. He's an author of books, Help on the Way, and A Survival Guide to Aging. Both are great. I've, I've read them both. I recommend them. Uh, and he's been speaking for over a decade across the country about senior finance and the secrets to aging with physical and financial health. He is a frequent columnist for Broker World, Think Advisor, Iris, the Newsmax uh, Corporation Finance, and has been a featured guest on over 50 radio programs, including he's appeared in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, NBC News, Fox News, USA Today, Kiplinger's, Investors Business Daily, PBS, and many, many others. Welcome, Chris. Well, Mark, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to be joining the program. Oh, you look great, Chris. Uh, you're I love your uh, office. Is that your conference room with the three things behind you? This is where we do all of our retirement genius, genius work. Yeah, well, the genius part is, I hate to say that because I know it only make that head get bigger, but the genius part does fit you. You are a retirement genius. So I, 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 I don't know who gave you that nickname, but it's very, very appropriate. So, it, it definitely stuck and it's trailed me for some time. Okay, well, um, uh, again, um, good to see you, and thank you so very much for agreeing to be here. Life settlements, you know, it's a little bit of a mystery to people. They hear the name, they see stuff on TV from time to time, but they're not quite sure what it is. Can you share what a life settlement is? Absolutely. Life settlements have actually been around for decades. It's, it's emerged today into becoming a very mainstream financial transaction. And, and what it boils down to is it's the sale of a life insurance policy by the current original owner to a new, usually financial investor, like a hedge fund. There are groups that will actually buy a life insurance policy from the owner for a lump sum payment. And then they will take over the premium payments. So let's say somebody had a, a $100,000 life insurance policy. And right. uh, the unique thing about life settlements is they're designed really to financially benefit people the older or the sicker they become. It's, it's a very unique financial transaction from the standpoint of it is really about the only financial option that will reward you with more value the older you are or the sicker you are. It's really designed for people, for seniors and people who are suffering with health conditions. But let's say you had a $100,000 life insurance policy and you were in your late 70s, maybe your 80s, uh, and you were suffering with different health conditions and, and starting to try and find ways to pay for medical bills, maybe long-term care costs. So you're looking at this life insurance policy. Well, you could through a life settlement, maybe get 20, 30, 40, 50, 60% of the death benefit today 
instead of abandoning that life insurance policy by no longer paying premiums, no longer uh, or, or taking the cash surrender value. Instead, the life insurance policy is an asset that has value that you can tap into through a life settlement. You sell it off, you get money, and that gives you new financial options that you can then work with because you've liquidated a policy instead of just letting it go. Well, that's an interesting thing because I don't think I've ever thought about my my life insurance policy as an asset before. But you make a great point. Instead of, especially if you have a term policy, so why would you let something lapse when you can get a price for it on the, in the open market? Well, what people don't realize is, is that life insurance policies are actually legally recognized as assets. And really? in fact, it's, it's very similar to a home, right? A home is personal property, and so is a life insurance policy. They're legally recognized as the same thing. They're personal property. So you pay years of mortgage payments for your house, but you don't one day just walk away from your home without selling it. You're always going to sell your home to get that value. Well, it's the same thing with a life insurance policy. After years of making premium payments, no one should just abandon that life insurance policy without first exploring what kind of settlement value could you get. Yeah, I, again, I, it fascinates me because, again, I just don't know that people think of it that way, but I'm glad to hear that. And yet, this isn't new, right? Like Life settlements have been around for a while. Yeah, life settlements first emerged back in the 80s and 90s, and uh, it has grown now over the years to become uh, a, another way to bring value to a life insurance policy owner. Uh, before that, people would either stop paying their premiums and let a policy go, or if there was cash surrender value, maybe they would take it. So like you said, with a term policy, people make premium payments into a term policy for 10, 15, 20 years, and then one day they just walk away from it and, and get right. nothing in return. And yeah. without realizing that they might have been able through a life settlement to be able to get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I see, I don't know what the stats are, but I remember seeing once that like more than 90% of all term policies never get to the part where they pay the death benefit. I don't know That's right. That's right. About 90% yeah. of, of, in fact, about 90% of all life insurance policies are in danger of either being lapsed or surrendered, but you have an incredibly high sur uh, uh, lapse rate of term policies because once they get past their term, if you don't convert it, then it becomes extremely expensive to keep paying the term premiums when you get past that that initial term, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is you bought. And so almost everybody walks away from that policy. And for many people who do, they're throwing that policy away needlessly after years of making premium payments without exploring could they have gotten something through a life settlement for it. It's just silly to, to think that that many people spend all that money, invest all that money into a policy, and then never get to collect anything from it. So. Yeah, I guess this is this is a much better alternative than uh, I realized until now. How long have you been doing life settlements? Well, you know, I've been in the financial services world for close to 25 years. And for the last 15 years, we've worked with life settlements. Uh, we first started using life settlements as a tool to help people pay for long-term care. We saw that, that there were particularly seniors as they were getting ready for long-term care, maybe they were doing a Medicaid spend now. Maybe they were getting ready to move into an assisted living community, get home care. And, and they would throw a life insurance policy away. And we said, wait a minute, we've got to start educating these people that they're throwing money away, that if they're going to use it for long-term care, it could actually be money that could be obtained for them, usually tax-free, to then use those dollars for long-term care. So we started about 15 years ago, working with assisted living communities, nursing homes, home care companies to help families access that value that they could then use for long-term care. And the company has just grown ever since where we work with families in all forms of life insurance, all situations where a life settlement could be the best and most appropriate use for that life insurance policy. Certainly, it is always better to explore a life settlement before you would lapse or surrender a policy. So describe for me the ideal life settlement client, customer. I mean, what, what, who and what and how, who are they? 
Well, the vast majority of people who are going to do a life settlement are going to be between the ages of 75 and 92. And as I said, they'll be suffering from some form of health impairment. Uh, They could be on a path to needing long-term care. They could even have a terminal condition. So it's people that are in that age set of 75 to 92, and they're battling some health impairments. They have a health condition, one or more, that at the end of the day probably would calculate a remaining life expectancy of 10 years or less. Wow. Who own okay. a universal life policy, a term life policy, or a whole life policy with a minimum death benefit of a hundred thousand dollars or greater? And the people that are buying these policies, I mean, these are reputable banks and investment houses and things like that, right? Like somebody isn't going to say, "Okay, well, you live longer than ten years now." You know, you're. I bought your policy. I need to help you along in the in huh. your life. Yeah, no, no. no. Uh, Thousands and thousands of life settlement transactions are done every year. In fact, last year, uh, 2019, there was four and a half billion dollars of life settlement transactions completed in this country. And it's it's major banks, uh, hedge funds, investment groups. They're looking to buy life insurance policies in big quantities. They're not going to just buy one policy and then sit on it. They're these groups are trying to buy hundreds or thousands of policies every year, and they create a, a book of asset with that life insurance policy that they own. They look at it no differently than if they were buying uh, apartment buildings or, or, or homes, uh, commercial real estate. They just look at life insurance as just another asset class. It can be valued. It, it, it is legal to sell and buy it. And so there is a very thriving market called the life insurance secondary market for people to be able to sell off that life insurance policy and get real value today. And and what we always say to people before they're going to do a life settlement is, is first and foremost, understand that the best use of a life insurance policy is to keep it until it pays out a death benefit. Because when a life insurance policy pays out a death benefit, that death benefit is is paid out to the beneficiaries tax-free. But the problem is a lot of people, particularly seniors or people who are struggling with health, their budgets start to get tighter. They start looking at a life insurance policy and those premium payments, and they start wondering, why are we still carrying this policy? We've been carrying it for years. Do I really want to pay thousands of dollars more this year in premium payments? Maybe it's time to just let it go. Well, when you do that, if you stop paying premiums, if you take your cash surrender value, you have to understand the life insurance policy cancels out, and it will never pay a death benefit. But right. the alternative in that situation is, first, see if you could get real value for it through a life settlement. And guess what? The process is quick and easy. It costs nothing to have a policy evaluation done, and it costs nothing to move forward and do a life settlement if you decide that, that it's something that you want to pursue. Okay, so... A person decides they want to go forward with and, and uh, do a life. So first of all, you've been in the business a while. S- share with me a couple stories so we get a better feel for who it is that's actually doing this. Well, uh, uh, here's a good here's a good example. There was a gentleman in his mid seventies. This was back back in the spring. He had about a million dollar term life policy. He'd been carrying it for years. And he had been battling cancer. It was coming and going, coming and going. Expenses were getting tighter for him. And he had actually decided he was no longer going to pay premiums on this policy. He was going to let it go. And fortunately, someone gave him the advice. He said, well, you know, there's a thing called a life settlement. You should look into that first. They contacted us. We took a look at that policy. Uh, And and it's a very simple review process. We're going to look at the policy. We're going to look at the medical records of that individual. Uh, The whole process of seeing if they would qualify for their settlement takes about a week, maybe less. And then you come back with the value that you could give them. In this case, the gentleman was able to get $450,000 for a million-dollar term life policy that he was literally about to throw away in the trash. He could not believe it. And so he went forward, did the settlement, took about a month and a half to complete the whole thing. And then he received a check for $450,000, 
which for him ended up being tax free. And it made all the difference for him financially uh, from a life insurance policy he was about to throw in the trash. In fact, I cannot give you a better example of turning trash into treasure than that. Trash is a cash. Right there. Yeah. Trash into cash. I like that. Um, now, now, I can tell you another interesting story. And this please. was last year. Uh, a family contacted us. Their mother was in an assisted living community. And they were running out of money. And they were actually starting to fall behind on their payments to the, to the assisted living community. They were getting uh, into arrears. They were starting a debt with the, with the assisted living community. And the debt quickly accumulated to about twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000. And they said, look, you know, if you don't clear this up and, and show that you can remain current, you're going to have to move out. And we're going to have to go into collection against your family members to pursue this money. Well, the family realized as they saw some information about the life settlement option that maybe that could be an outlet for them. They contacted us. We looked at the life insurance policy. Again, this person qualified. I think that policy was about a half million dollar policy. Uh, and they qualified for, I think, about a $300,000 settlement. And immediately from that, they were able to pay off their, their bill to the, to the, to the, comp, to the uh, assisted living community, get back to, to, to square one, show that they had more than enough money now in the bank to keep going forward and keep their mother in place. She lived in the, com she's still living in the community now. And at the pace they're spending that money, if perchance she were to pass away, that still left a legacy of money from that settlement that would go to the family because the, you know, the money's in, a, in an yeah. account. It's being used every month to pay for her care. The assisted living community is very comfortable about the situation. But if she passes away and let's say there's still $100,000 sitting in that account, that's going to go to the family. So she still gets the benefits of that. And right. That, that's that, that's an interesting thing. Is Do I understand it correct? You don't have to sell the entire policy. You can sell a segment of the policy. That's true. That's true. There are there are the options to sell the entire policy, to sell a portion of the policy, to do a long term care life settlement that's very specifically designed for the settlement to pay for long term care and be a tax free settlement. Uh, and uh, there's also uh, settlements that are called retained death benefits, where instead of taking cash, you just reduce the amount of the death benefit, and then you'll collect that in the future, but you pay no more premiums for the rest of your life. Right. That's the other thing that's important about this. I want to come back to that LTC thing in a second, but that's the other important thing from what I understood you just to say, that if you do a life settlement, you no longer have the responsibility of making any premium payments. And if it does convert into a whole life product, universal life product, whatever you convert it to, that's a much higher premium. And that's still on the, on the, the, the investor has to make that premium payment. You no longer have to make any payments toward the policy. Is that right? That's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's very important to remember that if you do a life settlement, you are no longer paying any premiums. It's so, not so a loan. So you eliminate the expense you're as well. You're paying anything back. You're actually selling off the policy, and then you are relieved of any more premium payments. You're going to get all your money up front, and you'll be relieved of all, all premium payments. And for many life settlements... The, that money you receive could be partially or entirely tax-free. Well, I can understand why some people would say, yeah, but I invested all this money into a policy to get 100000 or a million, like you said, and now you're saying I'm going to get 450000 instead. But to me, it seems that if I can get $450,000 to spend on me while I'm alive versus somebody else after I'm gone, you know, I'm the one that invested in that policy, and if I need the money, why wouldn't I want to get a, a – I didn't put $450,000 into it. So I'm making a profit off of my investment in most in most cases, I would think, and I'm getting a multiple to use while I'm still here as opposed to afterwards. And I'm not touching my life savings, so if something does happen to me, it'll be there for my beneficiaries. Well, that right? That's right. And again, I always emphasize the best use of a life insurance policy is to keep it, keep it in force and have that death benefit pay out. But you got to step back and then start considering, can you afford to make those premium payments? 
Do you have other assets that are potentially in jeopardy if, you, if you're in a cash crunch? You know, are, are your family members digging into their pockets to, to, to start paying for care, home care, and assisted living community? So you need to look at that policy not just as a vehicle to pay a death benefit, but as an asset. And the decision is, is the best use of the asset to pay out a death benefit years in the future, which will cost premium payments along the way, or do I cash it out now? Do I cash it out now, get as much money back as I can, uh, that you know, sometimes you get less, the same, or more than you've paid in premiums. It, it all depends. The way to think about the value of a life settlement, what you're going to get is, remember this, the older and sicker you are, the more you will get for a life settlement. So the range of a life settlement can be as low as 5 to 10% of the death benefit to as high as 60% of the death benefit. Yeah, again, why not take the money and live large? I don't understand. Your health. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, I, like I have a couple million dollar policy now, and the, the premium payment is like 15 grand a year. If I go another 10 years, that's $150,000 more dollars I have to lay out for that policy as opposed to taking the cash. So. Right. To me, they're, they're, I can see it. On the other hand, um, talk to me specifically about these LTC life settlements. This is something you created, and um, it sounds like it has some additional perks to it that a traditional life settlement might not. How's it work? That's right. Yeah, we, we introduced the long-term care life settlement into the market about 15 years ago. And what it does is it provides a bank trust account to hold the settlement funds and protect that money. So if somebody does a life settlement and they specifically want to use the funds for long-term care, move into an assisted living community, hire a home care company, move into a nursing home, whatever the case may be, memory care, any form of care is going to qualify. What will happen is you'll do the settlement and then you can take all or a portion of those funds and then place it into a special bank trust account. It's kind of like a health savings account. You know, it's a dedicated account, the money goes into, and then it has to be used on care. It keeps all the money protected and tax-free, and, and believe me, families really appreciate in these situations, kids are scattered across the country, and, and everybody's looking at each other, well, you know, who's gonna take on the responsibility for mom, or dad in a facility who's paying for it, who's managing the, the, the books every month. This relieves all that burden. It protects the money so that nobody can all of a sudden somehow get into you know, an unprotected bank account and money starts disappearing. It's locked up and protected. It's treated tax-free. And then payments are made automatically every month out of the account to whatever form of care the person wants. And it's, and it's a flexible account, so you could Maybe you start out in home care for $1,000 a month, and then six months later, it's time to move into assisted living community. That's going to be $5,000 a month. Well, a simple change notice to the account, and now the account is paying the assisted living community $5,000 a month every single month. Now, is it paying with that you money cash account, or is it pay just reimbursing? The other special feature is, remember, if the person were to pass away and there was any money still in the account unspent, that would go to whoever they named as the account beneficiary, so family members will still collect any money that wasn't used towards care. Okay, but is the, is, does the money come out in a cash payment, or does it just reimburse them what their actual expenses are? Well, the family will receive the money as a cash payment. Oh, they will. Okay, great. So they're yeah. free to do with it whatever they want. Okay. Yeah, so the, so the person passes away. There's $50,000 still sitting in the account. The account is just liquidated, and the money is sent to whoever's been named as the account beneficiary, which can be one or more people. Well, I, I've, I've been a frequent guest on 62 Who Knew, and I've shared before the story of my mom and dad um, in which they had a cash policy. And my, my mother collected, my father had Alzheimer's, and my, um, he battled it for six years. He passed away a year and a half ago. My um, mother collected $225,000 in benefits and spent $65,000 on his care. Yeah. She was able to take the additional part of that money and put it into the stock market when it was going nowhere but straight up, and it more yeah. than doubled. So she ended up in a much better situation financially than she was before, when, before my dad pa passed away. So right. 
the idea that you can get this in cash, and as long as you stay right now, again, long-term care is my expertise. So it's $380 a day. So as long as, as long as you stay below that, there is no tax liability on those monies as long as you're right. using it, like you say, for care. So right. um, works the same way? Yeah, yeah. The, the tax treatment for a life settlement is a couple of things. One, what you get for a life settlement at or below what you've paid in premiums into the policy is all tax free. So if you had a $100,000 life insurance policy and you had paid $50,000 in premiums into that policy over the years, and then you did a life settlement and got $50,000, it would be tax free. Tax free because it was just your return of your investment, right? Right, right. No it's, gains, it's, it's right. Return. Now, let's say you got $55,000. So you got $5,000 more than you had paid in premiums. That extra five thousand would be taxed as capital gain. Yeah, now, if you're going to use gain, life, much lower than income tax. life settlement, that then becomes also a tax-free way to use the funds from a life settlement. But if the fifty-five thousand was used for long-term care, it could all be tax-free. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because again, I'm in the business where every day I run into people who say, "I wish I got this earlier. I wish I did this before I was sick." I don't have the, the freedom or the choice to get traditional long-term care or hybrid policy or anything else. I have this life insurance. I got it when I was young for the kids to make sure my wife, the kids would be taken care of, but they're all grown up. They're out of the house now. You know, what do I need to do with this? And right. here's an opportunity to cash it in for a whole lot more money than you're going to get if you surrender it, or if you just take the cash value out of it, or if you let it go to, 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 to the term and it has to convert and then you don't have the money to pay for it. Right. And, and, so, and let me be clear, too. The life settlement is not a substitute for long-term care insurance. People who are smart planners should buy life insurance. They should buy long-term care insurance when they're young and healthy, because that is going to get you the most bang for your buck. You're going to get the most coverage. You're going to get the best rates the younger and healthier you are. So somebody who's going to do a life settlement is going to be too old or sick to qualify to buy a policy. So what we see happening a lot is people will, will be at the point where they're looking at long-term care. They'll call, their, they'll call an agent. They'll, they'll, they'll start looking into, well, we need to move mom into an assisted living community. Maybe we should buy one of those long-term care insurance policies now. Well, right. it's too late. And I get those calls every single day of the week. The question we always wait, ask you well, is, they waited too long. They freak out to get long-term care insurance, but do you have a life insurance policy? Because guess what? The person who won't qualify to buy insurance is actually the right person who will qualify to do a life settlement if they own a life insurance policy. Okay. So I had a client that called me just last week. It was exactly what you're, you're saying, our potential client for this. He was 87. So he wasn't going to qualify for anything in the, in the long-term care space. His wife was 83, right? He was right. sicker than his wife was. So the idea they had, when I mentioned to them, they, could, they had a life insurance policy. He was a professor at a big-time college. I won't mention who for his, for his protection, but big, big, big college. And um, he, he had a, a life policy. And what he thought he would do is sell the life policy on her so they could pay for their long-term care insurance because she's probably going to live longer and then that way when he passes she gets his money from the life insurance policy so she right. can use that for her long-term care so th th their thinking was let's sell the one that i have the life policy i have pay for our long-term care with it and then she'll get my money when i pass away so she'll have that for her long-term care right. that was their thinking Right. No, that's that's a smart way to be looking at the use of those policies in their situation. You know, it, it, it's it's interesting how well designed life settlements are for seniors or people who are or, or combating health. Now, most life settlements are done for people that are, again, between the age of, say, 75 and 92. But we certainly see circumstances where younger people and it's not often, but. We've seen settlements for people in their 40s, their 50s, their early 60s, where typically they'd be too young for a life settlement, but they have a cancer or ALS, something that, that, that 
is, uh, quite frankly, life-threatening. It could be a terminal condition. That would put them in the ballpark for a life settlement. But it's all about making the, 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 the balance between I have this policy, it costs me this much to keep it in force, someday in the future it's going to pay a death benefit, or I have these immediate needs, and financially, what am I prioritizing? It, it, do I have enough money cash out of pocket to keep the policy in force, pay for all my needs, or do, do I, I want my to money today or do I want to wait until after I die? It's a choice right. that you then are able to make. Right. I, I can understand why people would do it. Um, okay, so let's talk about the uh, finer points of this, if you will. What are the requirements in order to do a life settlement? If there's a minimum, there's a maximum, where, where are you at on that? Uh, any form of life insurance is going to qualify. So a term life policy, a universal life policy, whole life policy are all candidates for a life settlement. The minimum death benefit is going to be $100,000. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to submit uh, a pretty simple, uh, call it application intake form, usually one or two pages, and it's going to get some basic information about the policy owner, the insured on the policy, uh, what kind of policy it is, what's the death benefit, uh, what, what are the premium payments. And with that information, a policy, a policy review is going to be conducted. Now, again, there's no charge. There's no obligation for somebody to do a policy review. And pretty quickly, a, a one, two, three days, review that information. We'll, we'll determine, is this person going to qualify for a life settlement? Now, I can tell you, if the applicant is... 55 years old, perfectly healthy, and a marathon runner, we know right off, right out of the gate, they're not going to walk. But, get, you know, setting aside the obvious, give it a day or two, the initial analysis is going to determine, is this person potentially going to qualify for a settlement? And now what's going to be necessary to move forward? We're going to typically order a policy illustration that gives details about the policy for the remainder of the time it would be in force, we're going to order some medical records to look at what are the health conditions of this person. That takes a few weeks to go through the whole underwriting process, just like if you were buying insurance. You've got to be, it's got to be underwritten, and that can take two, three weeks. Get that done, and then the full formal value will be presented to the policy owner. So, again, let's say they had a $100,000 policy. They were uh, in their upper 70s, early 80s. They had some health conditions. Based on the medical records, it looked like it was a clear indication that they might live 10 years or less, and they get an offer of $50,000 for their $100,000 life insurance policy. If they accept, then they're going to receive a set of contracts sent to them by, in, by a FedEx package. And it's very much like the closing contracts if you have buy or sell a house. And I think everybody that's watching this show has bought or sold a house probably more than once. So you've sat in the conference room, you've seen the stack of documents, 30, 40 pages, sign here flags in them, and you go through it, you sign, you sign, and then you return that to, to the group that's buying the policy. They will then file with the insurance company a change of ownership form. It takes about a week for that to be confirmed. While all this is happening, by the way, the money for the sale of the life insurance policy is in an escrow. So the person who's doing the life settlement, the money that they're going to receive until the transaction is completed is protected in an escrow account. When the transaction is confirmed and completed, the money is released from the escrow account and sent to them. The settlement is done. They've transferred the ownership of the policy. They've received $50,000 for our example. Uh, and they're no longer going to be responsible for premium payments anymore going forward. Very, very much. You know, actually, you know, the regular host of this show, a gentleman named Mike Banner, is a predominant player in the um, reverse mortgage business. And in many ways, this sounds like a reverse mortgage for the insurance business. Is it, is it the same? Well, it's interesting because you do hear that comparison a lot. You know, we'll talk to people. They'll see TV commercials. Uh, there are TV commercials that people see that look like a reverse mortgage commercial. They're very similar. But... Uh, and so you'll hear the comparison, oh, this sounds like a reverse mortgage for a life insurance policy. And, you know, in simple terms, there's some similarities there. It's an asset, personal property, that you have an opportunity to get the value of today. 
that is very specific to people who are seniors and or people that have health problems. Uh, that's a lot of similarities to a reverse mortgage, but then there's some real key differences. Because remember, a reverse mortgage is a loan. So to get a reverse mortgage, you need to be living in the property. You need to be above the age of 62. You're going to get a loan that, although while you're in the, in the home, you don't have to pay anything towards that loan, eventually that loan needs to be paid off. But with a, but with a life settlement, it's not a loan. It's the actual sale of the asset. So when you get that money, that money yeah. is yours, free and clear, oftentimes tax-free, and you're not paying anybody back anything. You're, you've sold your asset. You've received your money. There's no restrictions on how the money's used. There's no restrictions right. on what you're doing. That's your money. And now you're yeah. free to go on a world cruise. Move into an assistant. No, no, no. I had a client do a reverse help. mortgage with Michael. Kids through college, whatever you want to do. Yeah, and he did it with if he did a reverse mortgage, and his biggest concern was that his he was going to leave his daughter with all this debt on the house when he passed away because the reverse mortgage lent him back the money from the equity in the house. Um, but as it turns out, they figured it out and she made it work. All and right. Typically, reverse this. mortgages are cleared by the sale of the house after the after somebody has left the home. Either they've passed away or they've right. moved out of the house. Right. She, but he, she, he had thought that was going to be part of her inheritance, but it doesn't matter. They worked it out. Um, give the people and myself uh, a sense of the size of this market. I mean, how many people are doing life settlements? How much... What goes on within the business? Uh, thousands of people a year do life settlements. It's a growing market. Uh, it's become a very mainstream transaction. 10, 20 years ago, most people hadn't heard of a life settlement. Uh, today, there's TV commercials. There's radio ads. There's all kinds of information, articles. Uh, for example, what we do, retirementgenius.com, on our website, you're going to find information about life settlements. <clears throat> or... or our, our financial services company, lcxlife.com. You're going to find information about life settlements. So, so the information is out there. The consumer awareness is growing. Thousands of people are doing life settlements every year. And last year, there was $4.5 billion of life settlement payouts to Americans across this country who own the life insurance. How much? How much was it? Four hundred and what? Four and a half billion dollars of life Four and settlement payments. billion with a B. Country last year. That's more than McDonald's sells hamburgers. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Billions. And what, what all those people had in common when they did a life settlement was one, they were older age, they had health conditions, they their life insurance policy was still in force, uh, and they had been making premium payments for years, and they were getting ready considering how they were going to get rid of this policy. They were going to stop paying premiums and let it go. They were going to take the cash surrender value. And then for those lucky ones who came to realize, wait a minute, I should look at a life settlement first, they then explored the avenue, and thousands of those people ended up across them receiving $4.5 billion of cash payouts for their life insurance policy. All right, so now let's go to... Look, I'm a, I can't turn on the TV, especially the cable television, anytime without hearing some sort of scam that's going on out there to take seniors out of their money or whatever. How do we protect the person that's selling the policy to make sure that they get what they're promised and that it's not in any way something that's getting over on them because of, of the way you know the deal is structured? How do you do that? Absolutely. The life settlement transaction, the life settlement industry, if you want to call it an industry, is very well regulated. 45 out of 50 states have life settlement regulations as law in their states. The life settlement transaction is regulated by the insurance departments of, of, of those states, and it requires consumer disclosures. There's actually even a free look back. There's even a free... Uh, uh, lemon law period, let's call it. It's called the rescission period. So if you do a life settlement and you take it all the way through to closing the life settlement and even receive your money, you have usually up to two weeks to change your mind. 
So let's say somebody was doing a life settlement. We've seen this happen. In the middle of doing the transaction, the contracts have been sent to them. All of a sudden, we get a phone call. I, I don't know how, I, we didn't expect this to happen. I don't know what to say, but our, our mother passed away yesterday. And, and what are we going to do? Uh, you know, you're, we're in the middle of this life settlement. Does this mean you're taking our policy? Absolutely not. The, 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 the transaction is canceled. The policy stays in the name and, and pays out to the beneficiaries. So those protections are in place. For how there's, long, even after you settle? How much time requirements. There's consumer protections in the form of a rescission period that can undo the transaction up to as much as two weeks past the time it's been, it's been completed, uh, okay. it, it, making sure that nobody is going to go into a life settlement without having thoroughly considered the implications all the way through. There's no cost to do a life settlement. There's no obligation all the way through uh, to the very end and even beyond the closing of the life settlement transaction. Okay, so I think I'm starting to get a picture here of what goes on. Um, again, what you're saying is these investment houses play the rules of large numbers, just like the insurance companies do when they insured you in the first place. So they put a portfolio together and the, the odds will take care of themselves if you have enough uh, policies in that risk pool. Um, what exactly does the policy owner have to do? It fills out that one sheet that you talked about that gives them the background information on the policy. And then you take it from there and do everything else? That's right. They're, they're going to fill out the initial application. They're going to sign a couple of authorization forms. One of the authorization forms allows for the collection and review of medical records because a critical part of understanding if somebody's going to qualify for a life settlement and how much value they would get from that life settlement is understanding their health. Somebody who's young and healthy is not going to qualify for a life settlement. The older and sicker you are, the better this transaction is going to do for you. So you're going to, we're going to take a look at your policy. We're going to take a look at your medical records. And, and, but all the work's being done for you. It's, it's very minimal work on the part of the policy owner. This is all being done by, by you know, the analysis, by financial groups who know how to look through this information and determine what is the payout that somebody can get for this life settlement and then move forward from there. From start to finish, from the first time you would look into a life settlement to receiving your money and, and, and completing that transaction is going to be between 60 and 90 days. There's going to be no cost whatsoever. And there's going to be no obligation all the way through to the end and then clearing that rescission period, which is usually another week or two after the settlement has closed. So when I, I sign these forms that you need, they're strictly for the authorization to you to access records. There's no, there's nothing, you don't have power of attorney. You can't represent me in, in any other way. You're just able to access what I need, right? So I'm completely safe as far as that goes it's a very it's a very it's actually a very easy to understand document the these the, it's called a hipaa authorization it's usually one or two pages it's very straightforward and simple language you're signing the authorization so that medical records can be ordered and you have given your consent to them being reviewed for the analysis of of determining would you qualify for a life summit it's the same thing you would do if you were applying for life insurance. They need to look at your medical records. They need to verify what your health is. So whether you're buying a life insurance policy or years later you're selling off a life insurance policy through a life settlement, the process is actually very much the same. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the mechanics of this. I decide I have a policy. I'm interested in finding out what the value is. How do I request this free quote? Well, there's certainly plenty of outlets you can find online. We're a company just like, just like others. You're going to, through a website, either send an email, make a phone call saying, I'm interested in learning more about a life settlement, and then they're going to quickly respond back to you and, and give you the, the intake form to collect that basic information, give you the authorization forms. And quite frankly, again, they're going to look 
before you even sign any authorizations, they're going to take a quick look to just see, are you even in the ballpark? Because again, and we see this happen every day, we'll get people who sit, submit an application, but they're 42 years old and perfectly healthy. Well, they're not, they're not qualified. We don't even bother to ask them to sign authorizations. We just let them know, hey, the good news, the bad news here is the good news. You don't qualify for a life settlement. You're too young and healthy. Well, again, I can tell you from being in the long-term care business, there are plenty of people out there who can either health qualify, they have money, but they can't health qualify, and or can't age qualify to get a, a, long, a typical long-term care solution. And they think they've got nothing as an option. And now you're saying, no, not wait, there, you might have an, if you have a life insurance policy. That's right. And there's a lot more life insurance policies in force is what I'm told than there are long-term care policies. There is. Think about this. There's about 8 million long-term care insurance policies in force today in this country. There's 150 million in force life insurance policies. And wow. seniors every year, to the tune of about over $200 billion worth of life insurance policies could potentially qualify for a life settlement. The problem is nine out of 10 of those seniors are in danger of throwing their policy away without ever even realizing that they could have done a life settlement. Now, the good news is awareness is increasing. People are seeing the TV commercials. They're hearing the radio ads. They're reading more stuff online about it. But still, when you consider that last year, there was four and a half billion dollars of life settlement payouts completed, but there was probably two hundred billion dollars worth of potentially eligible policies. So this market could increase 10, 20, 30, 40 fold, and it still wouldn't even be touching the size of what the market could be every year for seniors to take advantage of getting the value of an asset they own. They've made premium payments on for years, just like their home, but too many are throwing these policies away where you would never throw your home away. You're always going to sell your house if you decide you're, you, you no longer have use for that asset. It's the exact same thing for life insurance policy. The market is there. It is well regulated. It is The consumer is well protected. There's plenty of information and options out there to find life settlements. There's no cost to do a life settlement. There's no obligation to take that life settlement all the way through to the end. And, and it's a readily available financial tool, particularly designed to give seniors and people with failing health more financial reward the older or sicker that they are. Have you seen an uptick at all in requests and everything I, with, with what's going on in the country right now? I mean... You have this situation with COVID. All right. Most people are going to get better. Not all people. Obviously, 200,000 people are dead since they in the, in the United States, but 6 million people had it. Now, I know, understand a lot of those people have consequences after having it. They have lung damage or they have some other, you know, the thing, they, the side effect they have to live with after that. I guess that makes them a better candidate um for a life settlement if they find themselves in that position i just don't know how's that impacting your market no it's very true the the life settlement marketplace has been uh very active during this time period and it's interesting because life insurance policy sales have tightened up because insurance companies are worried about selling life insurance policies to people who could then contract covid and and pass away or become debilitated and have a, a much shorter life expectancy than what they that they had, had projected when they sold them the policy. Now, for a life settlement, because it financially rewards people, the older and sicker that they are, the COVID environment is very conducive to somebody right now who is a senior who may have health conditions and is considering a life settlement the market and the value of life settlements right now is actually probably higher than it's ever been. Okay. So I want to get more information on this. Do I Google it? Can I, is there a booklet or I know there's your books. They're about life settlements, but is there, what's the best way for me to learn more about exactly what you do and request the free quote? Well, I would recommend going to, we have two websites you can check out. There's 
retirementgenius.com, which has a lot of information, Genius. not only about life settlements, but a okay. host of, of retirement and senior care, senior living information and resources. Then for life settlements, you will also find a lot of information on lcxlife.com. Very LCX helpful educational Life. videos. Lcxlife.com. Okay. Flyers right. that people can read uh, to understand and then contact agents who can help you work through and access a life settlement. And there's no cost at all to the, to, to the policyholder to do any of this? No cost whatsoever. There, there, there's not one dime that will ever come out of the pocket of the policy owner. Now, let's be clear, though. What they are giving up in the transaction is collecting the death benefit in the future. If you had a if you had a hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy, right. and you kept it until you died, that hundred thousand dollars is going to your beneficiaries right. tax. But, if but you I'm decide, not collecting it, so you know again, keep that policy. I don't, I don't and you want, want people to sound selfish, but I'm not getting the money they are. Fifty thousand dollars today, right. that could also be tax free. So the question is, what is more important to you? $100,000 going to your beneficiaries in the future or $50,000 in your pocket today. Right. And I can, I can understand, especially if you get, if the market takes a downturn or whatever and your cash flow gets impacted, why all of a sudden getting access to cash in an area you didn't expect before that you could might be pretty attractive. Oh, well, believe me, I can tell you this. Anybody, and we have worked with so many families over the years, for life settlements. We've helped them with long-term care. We've helped them with retirement. We've helped them with other health care issues. We've helped them just get the real value from an asset that they were about to throw away. They can't believe it. We have never once, I have never in my 15 years ever had a complaint, anybody regret that they did it. Now, the regrets that I have heard, and I've heard these often, are the people that found out about a life settlement after they had thrown their life insurance policy away. Right. Those people, and they when they all of a sudden and they come were to out. discover that yeah. maybe they threw away tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars that could have been in their hands because they let their policy go and they never looked into the life settlement option, those are people we've seen serious regrets from and they want to get their policy back, but it's too late. You let that policy go, the insurance company is going to cancel the policy out and there's no second chances. No, I think I think that's a great point because again, I would imagine, especially now, there's a bunch of people in that position that weren't there six months ago. So that's right. They, that's you right. know, this is time right. to take a fresh look at this. Right, seniors who own a life insurance policy today, that is one of their most stable, valuable assets. And if you can keep it to pay out a death benefit, you should. But if you are thinking you're going to let that policy go, it would be absolutely irresponsible to let that policy go without examining, do you qualify for a life settlement? And if so, how much could you get? Whenever you're going to make a decision, any financial decision whatsoever, you need to make it with the best and most thorough information available to you. And why wouldn't somebody explore the value that they could get from a settlement when it doesn't cost them anything and they're not obligated to do anything but they're going to get some incredibly valuable information about that asset that potentially could be all the difference for them financially. So, again, the websites are lcx.life.com or just lcxlife.com? lcxlife.com and, and retirementgenius.com. Retirement oh, there it is. It's right above your name. Okay, I see it now. Um, great. So we have, the, so people know where to go. And in worst case, all they have to do is go to 62whonew.com and put in life settlement when they, when they, and, and we can then send them additional information, not me, you can send them additional information, right? That's right. There's, there, again, a host of, of, of easy to understand educational videos and not 20 minute videos, you know, one and a half to three minute videos that do a great job explaining life settlements flyers, materials, books that people can read, a host of information to better understand and take control of your retirement options today. Is that supposed to be you in that cartoon character? 
It is a caricature of me. Is it? You had hair there. That's why I said I had to go back up. Go back up to that. That was interesting. You had hair in that in that caricature. <laughs> I was like, wow. There you are. Well, I guess you still have hair now. It's just the lighting. Um, but there you go. You're, you're better looking in person, I want you to know, than you are in that caricature. Not that right that's back, saying a lot. You know what? Right saying. back at you, Bubala. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> lcxlife.com, retirementgenius.com. I love that. That's a great thing that you're calling that. And, and or just come to 62 Who Knew and tell them that you saw this life settlement segment. We're, we're down to our final minute. I want to thank you a, a whole bunch, I mean, a whole bunch here, Chris, for agreeing to be our guest. I know it was short notice. Nobody knew that Mike was going to take a break, and he will be back um, next week. But I think this is a fascinating topic. I would not be surprised if Michael wants to invite you back for future programming. I can see where there could be questions and additional ways that you could expand upon all this. And sometimes people need to hear it more than once. Um, uh, but th to me, this is a legitimate topic now for the, ret the, the senior who is saying to himself, hey, I'm going to live uh, and I want to live in the best life I can. And yet, even though I'm within 10 years of probably actuarially speaking, my life coming to an end, I can cash out with a life settlement. So yeah. I can see that you're doing a wonderful service for people and uh, keep up the good work. And with that, again, I thank you very much for being here. And to the, to the, to the audience, I will um, say tune in next week. See Mike again. Until then, everybody have a good evening. Thanks.